All right, so in today's uh, spry play, we're going to have a look at uh, some rehandle bridges. Normally, this would be live. YouTube live seems to be down this afternoon, so uh, I'm just going to be doing it, recording it, and uploading it. Uh, the model that I'm using here will be available uh, on, in the description of the video. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to step you through what we're looking at here today, which is uh, rehandle bridges in the demo model. Uh, so you can see here we've got some material that gets dumped into a bridge and then later on as the source comes down next to it the bridge gets removed if we hover on one of those blocks you can see it's called alpha bridge uh, and these are what are called stockpile tasks so stockpile tasks the easiest way to think of a stockpile task is that it's a source task uh, that can get dumped into it's the easiest way to in to, to think about it and in in the terms of a rehandle bridge like we've got here uh, it's easiest to think about it as a source task that starts out completed, as in it's empty. Uh, it gets filled up, and then once it's been filled up, uh, as it dumped into, it'll get dug out again. It's the, e the easiest way to think about these stockpile tasks is to think about them as, as source tasks, and I'll try and explain a couple of reasons why. Um, but I'm just going to show you the basics of firstly how they've been set up. So what the, most of the information to do with the bridges is stored on the actual source side of the table. So close this for a second. So the source side of the table holds the solid, it holds the initial state, it holds most of everything to do with the actual implementation of it. And there's a couple of key things that I, that I want to take note of. Firstly, um, in terms of the initial state, most of the time, if you're dealing with something that's a rehandle bridge and it's not yet been like it's not yet been uh, filled into, then you're going to want to leave its initial state as a hundred percent. As in, you don't you want it to sort of not be able to be dug. It's it's this is one of the trickier things about thinking about it because it's a source task and you want it to be empty on screen. You need to say that it's been a hundred percent pre-scheduled, even though you plan on filling it in and then redigging it. So the way that that's been done in this particular model says initial state, uh, the initial percentage completed field for the bridge. Uh, is its own field and it has been flagged in here as 100% complete. So that's one of the trickier things. It's essentially, it's been finished, but what we mean by that is it's empty, ready to be dumped into. Okay, so on the deposit side, if you're going to deal with this, we've got solids that have been cut up in Vulcan. Uh, you would import them in and generally pull the volume straight into a scheduling field. You don't want it to go through any processing generally, so I wouldn't be pulling it into your imported volumes. Or so they don't get dragged along with any scripts or data flows or any other processing that you're doing uh, unless for some reason you need to uh, so and then set the initial state uh, so in the actual case itself uh, there is a bridge process that has been added uh, it has a the source and destination quantities now these need to be identical as in what fills it needs to be exactly the same as what removes it you can't have a difference like prime and swelled or prime and total or rehandles or anything like that they need to be the same field uh, so you can see I've, I've pointed it at the initial state field uh, everything else about it in terms of how it works is it's easiest to think about once again as a source task it will have been set up so that it can be dug out at a particular rate and the rest of the source side of the setup is in the uh, getting the, the the dump and the destination table to sort of match so one of the trickier things about a stockpile is that for every record that exists on the source side to match it on the dump side we need some sort of matching structure in the uh, in the dump table so you can see here that in the alpha bridge we have got uh, strip one block five f seam now there's an F seam on the source side because the source side has a seam structure, um, but there's no F, F on the other side because there's no seam structure in your dumps and it doesn't make sense. But everything else is pretty cleanly mapped, even though they're sorted in the opposite direction because logically you do them in the opposite direction. Um, the 30 has a, has a pair and every record that you want to match has a, a matching, uh, it has a matching record. And in particular, it also has a, uh, the solid doesn't need to be there. You can see there's no solid in here, but it does need to have a matching volume. Sorry about this mucking around. So if we have a look at the 30 record on here, just in order to make enough room for this video to keep it nice and small for people on different devices. But if you have a look at the 30, you can see that the swelled volume is the same as the volume on the other side. Okay, so that's one of the key ones. And then how these actually work 
how we actually match everything together is through the stockpiles tab of your case settings. And so we'll close that for the moment. And what we have here on the actual case settings itself is a tab next to the post schedule task, which you've likely never used before, uh, which is where your stockpiles have been added. And this is where we make a definition about what uh, constitutes the actual bridge range. Now I've just realized that there's, we haven't included strip one in the bridge, so we can add that in. This is an, a demo that I haven't, uh, haven't played around with for a little while. Uh, but the, so this is where you say what range of tasks are gonna be included in the stockpile? What's the things that can be both dug and dumped into? So in this particular example, uh, it's from strips one to nine. You could be, in this particular example, it's just the alpha bridge. Anything in the bridge will have a matching component on the dump side. Uh, the process that you map, this is what digs off of it. Once again, try to think about your stockpiles as what, um, as what the source task relates to. So the, the task that digs off of the bridge will be called bridge. Um, the destination node expression, this is how we map the destination table and the dig table together. Uh, so that the, this is how you say, okay, if I have a particular record on the dump table, let's say it's alpha bridge S1 B5 F90, how do I find its matching uh, record on the destination table? And in this particular example, it says, give me the pit, the strip, the block, and the bench. Uh, this has been built up just by using the grouping expression generator. And this is so okay so okay match that and so you would match that particular combination and that's how you get the volumes to match and everything else to match uh blending mode you wouldn't worry about in this example i'll tackle blending in another stockpile related video um but uh the blending here is is not incredibly important um because you're not ma man managing the qualities of your bridge if for some reason you were trying to look at, look at it later and then the completion behavior so if you had for some reason a task that you both uh, that you dug from and dumped into multiple times, then you want to change your completion to behavior. This just refers to um, in your source path whether or not when you finish a task it disappears forever, or whether or not you can do it over and over and over again. So with the bridge, once we've dug it out once, once we've dumped into it once, and once we've dug it out once, it's done. We're not going to use it multiple times, so its completion behavior is removed from paths. Um, so that there on its own uh, is the, that's the, that's actually just what you needed to do to get the solids to appear in general. Now, uh, so if you weren't sure whether or not you'd set it up correctly, at that point you would run the schedule. Uh, if you got any errors with it, either you puzzle it out given the error messages or you give us a call. But if you wanna see the solids themselves, you may have to hit reload solids if you've already loaded your solids up. But in particular, once again, the source range is the one you wanna look at. I'm just gonna hide my destination solids. I'm gonna show all on my source solids. So there are all of my various, from strip one to strip nine, there are my various input, uh, my alpha bridges. Uh, so if I'm gonna kill that range for a moment, set everything back to normal. Okay, so with that in mind, that's just what's required to actually get the tasks themselves to appear. Uh, the second part of this is to set up the paths and then the third part of it is to generate the dependencies. Now that's, both of those things have already been done in here. You will need to, the, the dependencies are a little bit trickier in terms of thinking about them. So there's a little bit of setup, that's why I'm giving you this model so you can have a look at how uh, the demo is set up. But in terms of how you deal with the pathing of them, uh, it's very simple in terms of the, uh, the path in the source side, you literally just add the tasks to the path in the order in which you would want to dig them. So if I were to dig strip one to strip two, I would dig the uh, bridge and the source component of that at the same time within the same strip. So the way these have been numbered, that's strip four and that's strip five. So uh, the if we have a look at an example of where it's been pathed, there's a good example. Anyway, the way that you choose to par these is up to you, but you would obviously, you would be taking five and four at the same time. Uh, we'll use dependencies to link those tasks together rather than using the equipment path. Um, but you would generally have the bridge in terms of digging it a little higher up the path than, uh, than the subsequent strip so that you make sure that once you dig a component of this, that you dig the next component of the bridge as it comes down. Um, but you can manage that however you like. Uh, the pathing of it, so that's how we dig from it. Now, obviously we also need to dump to it, same as you would do with a normal dump schedule, same thing. 
just needs to be in the path for your dump schedule. Nothing special that you need to do. It's just, it's now both a dig task and a dump task. So you just dump into it at the, uh, uh, whenever it makes sense for you to do so with whatever equipment makes sense to do so. Um, the pathing of it is pretty simple for a rehandle bridge. It's just add it to the path. Um, the trickiest part of the setup is in thinking about how you want to make sure that these tasks all interact with each other and you need to consider a couple of different things. Um, in terms of the the way that the um, dependencies should work, I have listed them in order in which they kind of logically would need to happen. Uh, so the first dependency that you would need is something to stop the bridge in itself from just um, from being dumped somewhere where it shouldn't be dumped. So this, this particular one is um, potentially not required if you've got the next dependency done. So they're called 1A and 1B. You don't necessarily need them both. This one says, excuse me, that you can't dump into a bridge until the coal that it sits on top of has been dug out. I mean, it makes, makes reasonable sense. You don't want to dump on top of the coal. And so I'll just, I know there's not a lot of real estate on these um, high def videos, but I'm going to try and give myself a little bit more room to work with. There we go. So if you're not familiar with arrays, apologies, it's not the lesson for it, but we'll just be looking at particularly what one of those entries on its own looks like. So we'll bring up some dependency pairs. So what this says is that you can't dump into the bridge at strip two, there's a bridge at each one of these blocks until you have dug the same strip numbers coal. So the strip, the way the strips are aligned here is that the bridges, the strip numbers are aligned. So the bridge sits directly on top of the coal. So you can't dump into the bridge until the coal is gone. We have an alternative or a, com a combination one, which says that you can't fill in the bridge until the neighboring uh, matching input, alpha input block has been done. So in this particular example there, if we look at strip four, there's the 70 there, that task matches this task here. So this is saying you have to have dumped into that block before dumping into this one. So if you've already got something that the input dump is waiting on, you can just link it to your bridge and not have to worry about the, the first dependency that I showed you. Just get save, back to this. So you just need something to stop the bridge from starting. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing you need. And then you need another dependency which says, um, you can't actually, don't don't dig the bridge until the whole bridge has been done, as in there's not a lot of point in constructing it and then if you immediately then remove the task that you've taken out, um, you're never gonna build the bridge up because you'll also have a dump bottom up dependency. So the dump bottom up dependency will apply to uh, stockpile tasks. So this one, you know, making sure that you dump from the bottom up. And then if we uh, go back to this one, sorry. So don't dig bridge until the bridge has been filled, what that looks like is that you can't dig, and it's a little tricky because it's uh, not clear. You don't often use a source waits on destination dependency, but this is the source here is waiting on the whole block's bridge to have been filled before it can be dug. So that's just one way of making sure that you don't take out a bridge until it's been finished. But then you also wanna have something that keeps the bridge around for a little while. So this one says, don't take out the bridge until the next, until the matching strip bench has been cleared. And what that in this particular example means is you won't take out this, uh, F, this uh, F70, this 70 in strip four until the matching task, and we'll roll forward a little bit in time for when you see it. So the moment that we've finished taking the 70 in blocks five and six, then we've unlocked the uh, dependency on this side and you'll watch that as it goes down, it sort of matches one by one. You can link it however you like, you just probably need to have something that links it to the, the neighboring bench. Uh, and back to the dependencies. And then we have one more, which is one that stops the actual input dump from dumping in front of the bridge before the bridge has actually been taken out. So this one has, if we look at the pairs on this one, this one is a destination waits on source. Uh, so you have to have dug out the source side. You have to have dug out the source side of the bridge before you can dump into the next strip in that area. So this is suitable for this one. It's more, they're not necessarily gonna work for, you, for every model, but you need to have some relationships built up. The easiest way uh, to get started with this for your own model is just to run it immediately and see where it breaks and add in the dependencies as you need them. I mean, you can, it's also useful to diagram what you're actually trying to achieve. Um, 
but that is pretty much it uh, in terms of getting it working. There's obviously going to be a little bit of troubleshooting in these steps. This model has already been set up, so you can have a look at how it's set up, but you may miss a step. You may find your bridges are getting depleted the moment that they're getting filled, or you might find that they're never getting filled, or you know, there's there's all kinds of situations where this is not uh, the behavior is not going to be immediately clear. And oftentimes that's because they're both source tasks and their destination tasks. It can be tricky to remember intuitively which one is which. Um, but uh, that is pretty much it. And once you've got them set up, they can be uh, added to your model pretty easily. And once you've done it a couple of times, uh, you'll have wrapped your head around it. So anyway, uh, that covers off uh, the explanation or a simple introduction to how you can do bridges in your model. And uh, if you have any questions about it, the model's not doing what you need it to do, obviously, as always, just uh, get in touch. Otherwise, thank you for your time and have a good weekend.